Nobody wins when the family feels Take zero emotion not to Welcome to Perspective with Bank Today I got my nigga in the building with me The Shout John, OG Shouted John What's up my partner? What's up brother? How you feeling? Oh man, super wonderful Super wonderful Blessed Yeah man yeah, so you came up on what side of town? Actually, I came up in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So not just a side, not just a certain side of town, all of them. Oh, okay. Most of them, rather. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Carver Home, Bankhead, Boulevard, Pittsburgh. So just you are Atlanta. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, the yes. real Atlanta. The real one. Yeah. The real one. The real one. When I, when, a, when a nigga, I think it really went left when a nigga who's a natural born hustler turned into a junkie. I had like sin. Yeah. Which I think everybody fucking know now, cause yeah. the shit been just being said repeatedly. But yeah, I think that was my he and the judge hit the guy, hit the uh, the growl, uh, and say you got life. I think that's one of the worst feelings that anybody could feel. It's fired in Atlanta. Police found a man's body along Booker Avenue in Southwest Atlanta. That's not too far from Pittman Park. Police are now working to find a suspect and a motive. I'm the junior. I'm Mark Hill Carter Jr. And I just want to say, I don't think, I don't know if anybody noticed that my dad had a life sentence. So he had a murder dropped to a manslaughter and was able to come home off of that case. And we shared 20 years with him behind that case. Fam, in this video, we highlight the life of a well-respected OG based out of the Atlanta, Georgia area. A man who been fighting for his life since the late 90s, in and out of prison, and managed to get life in his early 20s. Now, how he came home is crazy in itself, which we'll later go over in full detail. But this is a man who received a life sentence, got it overturned, and a week later, got it reversed back to a life sentence. As mentioned, we cover his story, hear from his kids, a brief message from him, and see how he lost his life on Thanksgiving. But before we go over this one, I want you guys to remember, I won't give you no angle, I just give you the story. So with that being said, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, we'll jump right to it. Here's a couple highlighted pictures back in the 70s in Atlanta, Georgia. Here's some children who were served ice cream and other goodies at a party in 1972, celebrating the 125th birthday of the city of Atlanta. Here go Peachtree Street in Midtown in 1977. This is the strip at Peachtree and 10th Street in Midtown Atlanta that became home to many runways in 1978. This right here is a picture of Central Park in 1979. That same year in November, a kid who went by the name of Markel Cody was born. Markel grew up loving football. His mom had raised him. His dad was around, but unfortunately, according to him, fell victim to drugs in the streets. As Markel got older, by the early 90s, he had kids of his own. But at this point, he developed a nickname, Shorty Giant, OG Giant, by his reputation in the streets. Take zero emotion not to. Welcome to Perspective with Bank. Today I got my nigga in the building with me. The Shout John, OG Shouted John. What's up, my partner? But shortly after, on November 29th, 1996, Shorty John would catch a body in what he claimed was self-defense. Markel Cody was accused of taking the life of a man who went by the name of Clarence Weaver. But he didn't get indicted until the following year. A Fulton County grand jury had indicted Cody on June 17th, 1997 on charges of malice murder, felony murder, and aggravated assault. He ended up taking it to trial. In February of 1998, his trial will start. Shorty Giant testified in his case, and you'll later hear from him in an interview on why. But according to court documents, Shorty Giant was a drug dealer, and the victim, he was trying to get some work. When suddenly, they got into an argument. Shorty Giant had shot the victim in the leg. The victim ended up dying five days later. Once again, identified as Clarence Weaver. May he rest in peace and love and condolences to his family. Now, Shorty John testified that the victim was reaching for a gun when Shorty John shot in self-defense. Shorty John also called four witnesses who also testified that the victim had a gun. However, no gun was found on the victim or near the scene. The trial lasted three days, and on February 20th, 1998, the trial court sentenced Cody to life in prison for felony murder. Shorty John filed the motion for a new trial on March 5th, 1998, and the trial court granted the motion on March 26, 1999. The trial court vacated the order granting a new trial and instead entered an order denying the motion for new trial following the dismissal 
of his untimely appeal. But five years later, things would change for Shorty John. He sought an out-of-time appeal, which the trial court granted on February 23, 2004. Cody filed a notice of appeal on March 15, 2004, and the case was docketed in the court on April 15, 2004, and submitted for decision without oral argument on June 7, 2004. Now, essentially, they overturned the charges, but a week later, during a rebuttal hearing, they overturned it again, back to a life sentence. And check out Shorty John, emotions, as he described it, when hearing he got life once again. But still, things worked in Shorty John's favor because he managed to come home in 2007. What was that like for you the day that the judge said life? And you know what, to be honest with you, as we are, it's still, it's spooky when I think about it mm -hmm. because now, I done overcame it now. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's a difference when a person actually hear or see your life flash over your eyes. Hear, hear it through your ears, a flash over your eyes. You know what I'm saying? So you heard like how people say they saw their life, life flash. I like, heard it. You heard your life. Yeah, and that's all Ooh. I can remember. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it, and it, and it sounds almost, it's, it's, it's almost more, more critical than a pistol being shot. Seeing it, like, right? Because it's you know the judge got to hit the gavel, the, mm -hmm. um, the gavel, of I'm pronouncing that right. Yeah. You said the right gavel. Yeah, mm -hmm. hit that and life. So now you got to digest that because you don't really know what that mean off the top. Because you know at that time I'm still young. How old were you? I think I was twenty so. Mm -hmm. I think I was twenty so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I was twenty so. My kids, all of them were young. When I got locked up, like I think, yeah, I think my kid's real young when I got locked up. Yeah. I think I was 20 so. Okay. And that day, like, when you went back to your cell, what did you think? Man, the worst part was it wasn't even the cell part. It was the bus ride back from the courthouse to the jail. Because mm -hmm. what you're doing is you're witnessing a place that you might not even be able to get a chance to see in a long, long time. Mm -hmm was downtown right so you ride through you're going back to the to the county mm -hmm. but you're looking at stuff that in you're a like, different light man all you can say to yourself is man i don't know when i'm gonna see this again so really it was more so silence mm -hmm. it wasn't really to answer your question it wasn't really no talking it was more so it was a lot of chatter around me right niggas was talking yeah you know what I mean? but i'm was zoned in i'm gone yeah i'm just sitting there you know, I'm just sitting there right there just looking because that's all I could do. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I, like I said, it hadn't really, you know, I hadn't figured out, not so much figured out. I just hadn't adapted to what, what was just, had, just had happened. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was more so like, you know, life. I mean, went to court, went to trial, lost, come back to court, get a life sentence, and now you're back on the bus getting back. Go back, back to, to jail. jail. Yeah. So what made you what made you go to trial? Because most people, you know, they the DA and them come with them stories and they tell you you're gonna get this, this, this gonna happen, you'll never see the day of light. Man, so the, a lot of people will cop out and take a plea. To be honest with you, my uh, my case was different. I, I I pretty much had to go to trial after I changed my plea. I'm believe it or not, I'm crazy. I'm a little crazy. No, <laughs> believe it or not. And this is a true story. Yeah. The dude that tried to flip on me, mm -hmm. I, I, I peeped he was over in one of those cells, but he was on a federal case. Mm. So I already knew that it ain't even no reason for him to be here mm -hmm. other than if he's trying to be. Cooperate with, with the them. government, yeah. And they got him separated. Mm -hmm. So when I come down, we line up, we coming down, we walking. I see him, he wave at me. I sh way back at him a little bit. Then I look at him, but he don't even know I already had had my um my discovery package, and I saw that he was wet. So when he weighed them, I weighed back at him, and then I said, "Well, I know what you over here to do." And he was like, "What you talking about?" I said, "Don't worry about it though." I said, "Before I let you sink me, nigga, I sank myself. Mm. Excuse my language." Yeah. I said, before I let you sink me and get away, I sank myself. So I called my attorney, told my attorney, hey, look, come here. Excuse me again. I said, see, this faggot-ass nigga don't want to do his time. 
<laughs> but he gonna have to. Yeah. Cause they ain't gonna need his testimony, his testimony against anymore. me. Cause I'm gonna tell him I did. Yeah. So I switched my plea. Mm. It was the craziest shit in the world. Yeah. Cause they really didn't have no whole lot of evidence on me. Mm-hmm. So I switched my plea. I told my attorney, I said, look here, just go up there and tell them. Instead of me saying I didn't do it, I did it, but it was self defense. Mm-hmm. It was the dumbest shit in the world. Excuse me, camera. It was the dumbest shit in the world, but I'm just built like that. I told you, I try to stay solid. Like, I, I'm just letting Buddy know, like, you're not getting out on me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're going to do your time. Yeah, you're not getting out on me. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know what else going to happen for you. You know what I'm saying? You're not getting out on me. Now before we continue, we do want to say shout out to the Break Free Podcast. If you guys want to check the entirety of that interview out, you guys should go over there and do so. And three years later, Markel Cody Jr., a.k.a. Jose Guapo, will start making some rounds in the hip-hop game alongside the Migos, Skipper the Flipper, and many more. Mother, we don't give a damn. And if I'm with you, do run, run it up. Let's get it. The fuck is you talking about, nigga? The fuck, the fuck is you talking about? Yeah, I'm not going nowhere where I want to go. Nah, niggas say like, if I've been over there, they want to steal it. I ain't going nowhere new, bro. my bitches, I'm just Hey, we're all out of jail, bro. We're out of break. Everything. We're part of the big league club. We're part of getting money, getting out the going, bro. Cool. Daddy did his thing. Now, Jose Guapo was just one of many shorty giant talented kids, but like they say, all good things don't last forever. Now, 52 years old, shorty giant will have his last Thanksgiving after being gunned down in his home. Thanksgiving night, Atlanta Police Department had responded to a person shot call on the 1100 block of Booker Avenue in Southwest Atlanta. When they arrived on the scene, although Markel Cody shot, when medical personnel responded to the scene and assessed the victim, it was determined he passed away on the scene. May he rest in peace and love condolences to his family. In Atlanta, police found a man's body along Booker Avenue in southwest Atlanta. That's not too far from Pittman Park. Police are now working to find a suspect and a... Mo- a week later, December 5th, 2024, Markel Cody family will host his funeral. And his son, Markel Cody Jr., a.k.a. Jose Guapo, had this to say. I'm the junior. I'm Markel Carter Jr. And I just want to say, I don't think, I don't know if anybody noticed that my dad had a life sentence. So he had a murder dropped to a manslaughter and was able to come home off of that case. And we shared 20 years with him behind that case. We were told a life sentence. We didn't know he was going to see our dad again or not. So just to have that blessing of them 20 years, I really appreciate that. And also, what was brought to my attention is that he did his job as far as his kids. He did what every father want to do. See, that kids grow up, strengthen up, and start their own family and blossom together. He did that. Shaw John did that. And I'm forever grateful. And I'll make sure by being your junior that I'm going to take your name worldwide. I don't care. I'm going to just start saying it. Hey, how you doing today? Yeah, Mark Carroll called the junior. I just want to thank everybody for coming out, all the family, the friends, everybody, man. Y'all know it's real love on this end. We're very family oriented. It's like we've been taking hit after hit, back to back. But guess what? We ain't going to question God. We're going to push forward. And we're going to make sure we stand tall. And we're going to hold it down for each other because that's how we was raised. You dig what I'm saying? Y'all have a good day after this funeral. Uh, I'm not really uh, one uh, public speaking, so y'all bear with me. Um, I just want to thank y'all for coming out, showing the love and support for my father. You know, uh, one of the things that me and him talked about a lot was, you know, when he get in his feelings, he'll call me. You know, don't nobody love me no more. Don't nobody got no respect no more. I ain't for, I ain't mess with nobody. 
I'm like, Pop, man, these folk, man, with you, man. You just tripping, man. You know. As we head out of here, Markel Cody, rest in peace. Clarence Weaver, rest in peace. Love and condolences to both of you guys' families. Fam, this was the story of a well-respected Atlanta OG who managed to escape a life sentence. Caught a body, came home, and was able to spend time with his family before ultimately losing his life on Thanksgiving. As of now, no one has been arrested, and as more developed, I'll keep you guys updated. Until then, fam, let me know how you guys feel in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until then, I'll catch you guys on the next one.